Peace everyone. My name is Heather Archer, author and creator of The Grind Culture Detox, which is a workplace wellness platform and coaching model which supports working professionals to integrate more ease and flow within their work days and to do so from a, a spiritual foundation. This is not a typical wellness journey uh, because I feel like a lot of times wellness is whitewashed in our society. Sorry, my glasses are all, my fake glasses. Okay, that's better. I gotta put my glasses on so y'all know I'm being really intellectual right now. But <laughs> but yeah, so this, uh, the Grind Culture Detox isn't just like a typical wellness journey. It's actually specifically for folks who have not seen themselves fit into traditional Western society. And a lot of that has been done by design because even though everybody's impacted by grind culture, the people who are more likely to be impacted by grind culture are people of color, disabled folks, femme identified folks, and then of course a mixture of all of that. Um, and the reason why is because these groups, we've been told in society that we're less than. And so therefore we must work harder to be seen in society, okay? So that's kind of like, I don't know if y'all heard that quote where it's like, have the confidence of a mediocre white male. Like that shit's real because there is this level of confidence that um, a lot of times, traditionally, I'm not going to say that that's the case today because things are growing, changing, and evolving as we speak. But typically in our society, like white men have kind of been privileged and put on this pedestal in our society as being the voice of reason, as being what we need to aspire to. Cis male, cis white male ideas, you know? And so that's left a lot of people of color, a lot of minorities, a lot of women, a lot of femmes, a lot of queer folks on the sidelines with that. And so the Grind Culture Detox also seeks to, um, seeks to liberate our consciousness from the ways in which oppression has harmed us on all different levels, but has also caused a spiritual harm. And so with that, um, I wanna talk a little bit about Black Lives Matter and what I think that Black Lives Matter is missing the target on. So, and I say this out of love, not out of like, y'all need to da 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 No. This is to add to the conversation because I haven't heard this narrative yet. Um, if y'all know of anybody who has been kind of sharing a narrative like this, please let me know and I'd love to learn more. But, I think that the Black Lives Matter movement has basically fizzled out and been completely co-opted. We all, a lot of us know that. So that's not my main argument. That's not as much of an original argument. My argument is around why that has happened and what made it fizzle out and how did it get co-opted so quickly? Because here it is, this is the issue y'all and y'all know what I'm talking about. Why is it that I only see like Black Lives Matter signs in like all white neighborhoods? That don't make no kind of sense, you know? I don't know what happened there so quickly. I mean, it was started by a bunch of black femmes and, and women. And now I only see Black Lives Matter signs on like the lawns of like elite white neighborhoods. I don't know what happened. So I'm confused. If y'all are confused too, let me know in the comments. But how did that happen? I really think it was because for two reasons. Number one, Black Lives Matter is not aspirational. Um, it's not aspirational enough. It's not enough to just say Black Lives Matter. And then that's, that's enough. Um, duh, I know I matter. I know my life matters. I know my son's life matters. Like what? I know my family's life ma matters. Like what are course like I'm not gonna sit here and waste my time affirming that I matter that is a that's an obvious you know and to do so I feel like is belittling you know it's like really we're in 20 2022 and we still got to affirm that our lives matter and it sucks because we are under some really serious systemic oppression specifically with the growth of the prison industrial complex and the issues we've been having around police brutality. And then now we have this whole other issue of 
being like living in a declining economy and then seeing people want to lean more on the police to enforce societal um to, to enforce laws to provide a band-aid approach on societal issues that really stem from a deep sense of oppression so i just want to like kind of put that out like i understand that even though black lives matter itself is not an aspirational enough slogan to get behind specifically for folks of color i also want to say that our society currently has such a low consciousness that we have to go there you know we have to start at the building blocks of like black lives matter you guys remember so that's no one reason why I got co-opted so quickly because it's really more of a message for white people. It's really not a message to activate black people themselves. So that's something to consider. But there's another layer. I'm not just gonna stop there. Another reason why the Black Lives Matter movement is fizzling out is because they um, are not backed by any kind of spiritual principles. If we think about a lot of the civil rights leaders that we've had in our time, they've had a spiritual foundation. So, you know, you got your obvious players, like you got your Martin Luther Kings, right? Who was a pastor or a minister. And you got Malcolm X, who was a part of the nation of Islam. And then later uh, got, you know, he converted to traditional Islam. So you have those examples, which we've heard about. But then at the same time, there's like examples like Angela Davis, who is a um, who is a civil rights activist, but she actually started practicing yoga and meditation when she was imprisoned for uh, civil rights, you know, for protesting and fighting for civil rights. And she was actually able to get through that experience, which gave her a severe amount of anxiety. And she was able to get through that experience through meditation and yoga. We don't hear enough about that story. Um, or Alice Coltrane, who was a huge activist when it came to transcendental meditation and also supported civil rights as well. And um, was very much of a spiritual warrior, but we kind of see her more as a musician. Like we don't show the narrative enough of her uh, being also a spiritual guru in a lot of ways. So, just kind of thinking about the connection between spirituality and activism. There is a very, there's an important connection that shouldn't be lost. And if it gets uh, severed, then it will compromise the strength of a movement, you know? Now you might argue, well, yeah, you mentioned some people who were around during the civil rights movement, but then why isn't the civil rights movement here today? Um, valid. That is very valid. I would actually argue that that's because the spirituality, the types of spirituality that we have been rooted in have been a little bit too much designed by the, um, the powers that are seeking to oppress large groups of people by patriarchy, right? By a caste system, a racial caste system. You know, these things can be found a lot of times in a lot of the major religions that a lot of folks subscribe to today. And so, a part of the inner revolution of the grind culture detox journey, of this next level of consciousness that we're going into as a as a global society, we are going to have to step our spiritual game up. And that means becoming a lot more well-versed in the principles that govern our universe to support us with um, co-creating co a new way of living, working, and being. And in future content, I'm going to be providing very detailed examples of activists in history which have who have um, done just that, who have very much had like an occult background, you know, maybe they seem like they were Christian on the surface, but in all actuality, they may have been practicing hoodoo, you know, or root work or animism. And so we're going to, we'll talk a little bit more about that too, because, and the interesting thing is the ones that had these really deep non-Western spiritual foundations they were able to achieve great, great, amazing things. And so I would venture to say that those, it's because it's through their spirituality 
that they were able to achieve these great things. And so my message to the Black Lives Matter movement is to number one, aspire for more. If, we, if you do want to move communities of color again, you're going to have to transform the matter, right? Yeah, duh, we know Black Lives Matter. What about Black Lives Healing? What about Black Lives Thriving? Okay, we need to elevate our consciousness, all right? That was a very, we had to respond to a very low level of consciousness when we were all sent yelling Black Lives Matter because folks were li literally killing us in cold blood or killing Black people in cold blood um, daily. And it's still happening. So I get that. And we don't want to meet their level of consciousness. We want to aspire for more. So not Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Healing, Black Lives Thriving. And then also infuse the movement with spirituality, spiritual principles, reclaiming African and indigenous healing practices to provide more power and sustenance for the movement. Otherwise, it's just going to be a hollow shell, which is what it, it kind of feels like it is today, y'all. And I say that from love and I just, you know, much respect for the folks who started this movement the, for Black Lives Matter because it's not all on them to have all the answers either. We all have to contribute um, to the pl and step up to the plate and make a contribution in towards this pathway of liberation. So this is not to point fing fingers. This is to open up a conversation around how to how to uh, take things to the next level? How can we evolve the consciousness of the Black liberation movement? And maybe it's not the movement. Maybe it's not just one. I also understand that too. But really kind of going back to the drawing board around what are the found, what foundations are we rooted on when we, when we discuss racial equity and justice in our society? And how can we broaden our imagination so that we're able to dream more around liberation and possibilities for thriving outside of just plain survival, just plain mattering. We know we matter. We're so much more than just mattering, right? We're creating, we're thriving, we are building, and um, we need a message to really activate us if we are going to if we're if we're going to you know our our I will say that our healing is inevitable so I'm not worried about that and at the same time like let's start it now let's the the time is now so there is an urgency with that um so yeah that's my that's my little two cents on the issue y'all okay and if no one told you today remember thriving is your birthright and if you're interested in learning more about the Grind Culture Detox, visit the links below and check out the book. Buy it for a friend. Peace.